Egotastic Log Supplemental. Star date? I think it might be Thursday. Having just finished watching the all-new Star Trek Lower Deck series from the empirical streaming conglomerate, calling themselves CBS All of the Access, it's time to head out to the Egomobile and tell everyone what I think about it. But it has suddenly occurred to me that JP hungry. JP no can talk unless num nums for his belly are acquired. Ensign, set a course for breakfast. Let's do it. Dun, 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 dun. Hey gang, I'm JP and welcome back to Egotastic Fun Time, taking place in my car because I've torn apart my entire studio because I got a new computer, but also I wanted my damn bedroom back, so I'm putting my bed back into the studio. Making videos is great and all that and it takes room, but I'm just going to find another way just to film in other places. And it's only 81 degrees outside. Yay! I said it right off the bat. Once they announced Lower Decks, which of course is uh, based upon a really great episode of The Next Generation called Lower Decks, about that part of the crew that nobody cares about that's doing kind of the grunt work. No one's talked about or referred to. They don't even necessarily, the, the bridge crew doesn't even necessarily remember their names uh, half the time. Uh, it's a great premise. Once it was announced that they're doing a Lower Decks cartoon, obviously going to be a comedy. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'm not in love with Discovery, though I've always rooted for it because it's Star Trek, or it's a new brand. It's a new universe of Star Trek. So I'm like, well, it's the only Star Trek that's new that's being made, so I'm going to root for it to win me over at some point. It never really did. Picard, <sighs> Absolutely loved it. And if you don't love it, hey, that's your deal. You don't have to like everything that other people like or vice versa, you guys. Shouldn't offend you if someone doesn't like something that you like or does like something that you don't like because we're adults. JP is throwing down some truth bombs. It definitely seems like it is what everybody thought the Orville was going to be and was not. And thank goodness the Orville was not that. The Orville is a very thoughtful, serious show with some very, very heavy uh, social commentary going on, but they throw some jokes in. Definitely not a traditional Star Trek show, which we never thought it was going to be, and nor is it supposed to be. Um, but man, it's very Star Trek-y. Very different vibe, uh, the characters, it's very different type of characters that we're following. These are the, these are the Rugrats. These are the Motley crew down there. We have the main character, Brad, I think his name is, played by Jack Quaid, who you might recognize from The Boys as Huey. Quaid, get your ass to Maz. And his character is very much a stickler. He's a hall monitor, basically. He's the star of the show. He's great. We love him. Uh, a, a good character. Uh, but he's basically the guy who's a fanboy. He's a fanboy, a star. Star Trek fanboy, if you will. He's a he's a, a Starfleet fanboy. He loves, you know, everything about Starfleet. He imagines himself as a captain. And then we have the his his buddy uh, Beckett, and she is uh, she's the no holds barred, do what you want. She has a totally different attitude about the upper decks, the the uh, the officers on the bridge. She thinks they're all into themselves and don't really care. Uh, about anything except for their own glory, which is something I would think in Star Trek the lower deck uh, officers might actually uh, think because they're not being referred to they're not being asked their opinions about anything They're not even being remembered really so that really does make sense I do love that there is a cyborg character who's part of the lower decks pill boy who's a new cyborg He's only been a cyborg for a couple weeks So he's not used to everything yet, which is a really fun new way to have a cyborg character Which is which is great and then we also have an Orion girl who's part of the crew don't know much about her yet And all these characters, they serve aboard the USS Cerritos, which reminds me of all the commercials for the Cerritos Auto Square. This is not the best ship. It's not the worst ship. Uh, they're not doing the greatest Star trek -y Starfleet missions. Despite all the comedy, despite the point of view, this to me felt like the most traditional style Star Trek that CBS has done so far which is both ironic, I guess you could say it might be sad, but also at the same time, 
Eh, it depends on your point of view. I loved what they did with Picard. It's, it was totally different. But this show, Star Trek Lower Decks, is definitely 100% and completely obvious based on the next generation. It looks like the next generation. It plays like the next generation. Uh, the title credits, the intro, most of the jokes, most of the alien races that you see, the ship, the L cars, everything is extremely Star Trek The Next Generation, and that was done on purpose. These these writers, the creator is obviously a huge fan of 90s Star Trek, as am I, and it was just evident throughout the entire episode that, oh man, this is The Next Generation, you know, 30, 40 years later. The show takes place in 2380. Off the top of my head, I believe, is I think one year after Admiral Picard left Starfleet because uh, because of the whole Romulan situation. This happens in the same year that Captain Rios, back when he was a commander, uh, had his whole situation happen when he met the Synthetics uh, with his previous captain. His previous captain killed the Synthetics and then shot himself because... I sad. So this is 19 years before uh, uh, the Star Trek Picard series begins, okay? So this is where we are in the timeline. So it has the, the those cool uniforms that we saw in all the flashbacks from Picard, which actually, I think, actually even look better in a cartoon format. But you'll see right off the bat, this is Star Trek The Next Generation. You know, I thought this was just gonna be a cartoon with some Star Trek jokes in it, uh, which I'm fine with, but it was more than that. I, I felt like I was, it felt like Star Trek to me. It scratched an itch for some reason, an itch that I didn't know I had. I mean, I don't really care about comedy in Star Trek, even though I'm more of a comedy fan than I am a sci-fi fan. Yeah, I said it. But there was so much Star Trekiness in there that, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is Star Trek. This is a Star Trek series. Uh, certainly I enjoyed it much more than the original series. <laughs> Uh, animated series. There's Star Trek missions and ex exciting missions and strange new worlds and all that stuff going on in the show, but that's going on around the Lower Decks. That stuff is happening and the Lower Decks is dealing with whatever they're dealing with while all this other stuff happens around them, which I think is an amazing idea so that the show, Star Trek's happening in the show, but these characters, they got some other stuff going on, some other side stories. If you're a fan of Futurama, you're gonna absolutely adore this show. Is this worth subscribing for 23 weeks of Star Trek or 10 weeks of Star Trek? Because I believe Lower Decks is gonna be 10 episodes long. Uh, is this worth subscribing? No, not for a cartoon. You'd have to have some other things on the CBS All Access streaming app that you would want to watch, I would think. Um, I, I, the show's not worth $7 a month for a, a, a couple months, but definitely worth watching. I think you will absolutely enjoy it unless you just don't like jokes at all. That's just the way, you know, different strokes for different folks, you guys. To move the world. Hmm. But if you have the money, go ahead and subscribe. There's no way I don't think that you're not going to enjoy this show. Um, I watched it. I really, I really dug it. Though I don't have CBS All Access. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to meeting some of the other characters on the show. As long as it's not another Philippa Giorgio situation. Ah, oh, I cannot stand. No way to redeem that character. Writers of Star Trek Discovery. She's a monster. Her lines are awkward. And you should write her off the show. No offense, Michelle. You're doing a great job. But the writers, get rid of Giorgio. She sucks, man. Tell me what you think. Did you watch Lower Decks? Do you plan on watching Lower Decks? Are your feelings hurt from Star Trek and you plan to never watch Star Trek? ever again, but you keep talking about it all the time and complaining about it. It's a cartoon. I don't even know why I'm reviewing it, but I'm going to review it every single episode. This is a spoiler-free version uh, because this thing just started. Let's get people out there watching it and see what they think. I look forward to having a conversation with you. Uh, click on the stuff down there. Help support the show, damn it. I'll see you guys very soon, and as always, I hope all your times are egotastic Star Trek the Orville fun times. Love you. Bye-bye.